Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Ah, we had a week off. Wasn't that lovely? Spring break. <laughs> The, well. fun, the funny part about it is it was it was planned, but even if it wasn't planned, it was going to happen no matter what, which I will talk about more in security ha, later on yes. in the show. You, you did a bitner with your machines, I understand. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't exactly have the, the most fun break I spent. I was basically a pin cushion um, because I had the time off. Uh, well, I, I had planned on getting the shot anyways. I got my second vaccine, which knocked me on my butt for a day. You had your second shot as well during the, the time off that we had. So yep. we basically lost two days anyways. So it's probably for the best we took the week <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And uh, I am coming up uh, May 1st is going to be my my going out day because that is the day You're that coming out of the closet. Jason? I am. I'm coming out of the closet. And I'm going to the polo lounge. <laughs> That's where I'm going. <laughs> I've been inside for over a year and I am going to go have me some caviar. And uh, they have this amazing truffle eggs Benedict. Oh, it is going to be glorious. It is going to be glorious. Reservations are made. That's all I got to nice. say. Nice, very nice. Uh, my wife has planned a trip. I was expecting to spend a second, uh, second uh, COVID birthday, but uh, my wife has planned a trip out to Ojai for my birthday, uh, mid-May, and uh, we'll, we will be dining and uh, enjoying a night in a hotel room without a kid. Ooh, so that's going to be very fancy. Uh, bow the- wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's hoping. Uh, you never know. Uh, I'm a married man, so you take what you get. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, one of the first things I plan on doing uh, just it will be that, but uh, I'll, I'll be fully vaccinated before that. And I don't know if I'm ready to just sit in a bar yet, but I'll certainly go and sit outdoors at my old local and have a beer, which I, I'm very much looking forward to as soon as I'm at my 94% peak threshold. Exactly. That's why the, the Polo Lounge is perfect because it's outdoor dining. Yeah, so very nice. I am fine. With I, it. I don't know when I'm going to be comfortable doing indoor. I, I just don't. Um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, California is doing very well at the moment. So, you know, but uh, I, I, I'm a full supporter of the idea of doing uh, of doing COVID uh, and vaccine passports. I, w- I would like to know that everybody at an establishment has been fully vaccinated uh, in terms of not just uh, guests, but uh, people that work there. It'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. But uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck with that. Yeah, considering yeah, millions so. of people aren't even getting their second shot. What the hell, people? I know, I know. Uh, that isn't the only prick I got uh, during our break. Um, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I had filed my paperwork for Canadian residency ooh, nearly a year ago now, uh, shortly after COVID started. I figured, well, I, I need I need to just get this done so we can get out of there. And uh, typical you know, bureaucracy uh, everywhere. It just sat in an office for about six to seven months while people that had filed after me uh, – uh, we're getting their notifications that they had been approved or whatnot. And a uh, couple, about two weeks ago, uh, they finally seemed to have found my application. They they must have pushed the chair out of the way and found the crack that it fell into. Uh-huh. And they started moving pretty quickly. So I got the, you need to go get your physical and get yourself tested and all that sort of stuff. So I went off and did that. And I got the results from that today. So it's kind of nice. Uh, you know, not that I had done anything that would have gotten me HIV in the last year or so, uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't have HIV, uh, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, no tuberculosis. Is that? It's there's some comfort in the fact that you know they did a full like lung X-ray and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, no, I, I definitely never got COVID. My my lungs are totally fine. I'm I'm not some long hauler that's going to be you know a diminished uh, bot breath oxygen capacity or anything i i I feel somewhat comforted at going into this knowing i'm pretty damn healthy so you know just hold on until next wednesday and when i'm at 94 percent and i might get out of this alive jason maybe not sane but alive (laughs) yeah trust me nobody gets out of anything alive (laughs) on a long enough timeline Mm -hmm. uh, i'm surprised that they make you go through all those hoops just to go to canada um, you know, the, the, that whole free healthcare thing. They don't want people coming with. Ah, <laughs> good point. <laughs> you know, they, they do look into these sorts of, I don't think, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure what exactly would stop you from coming in, but they do like to know pre-existing conditions. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Interesting. Well, in follow-up, we have a pre-existing condition. It is called being a douchebag. Yes. Uh-huh. 
Yes, we talked about Travis Kalanick's uh, new uh, Cloud Kitchen startup on the previous episode and how he's just pissing off all the neighbors. Well, apparently he's pissing off all the employees, too, because everybody's uh, hitting the road. Yeah, hundreds of employees have left. Not just a few. Hundreds. the same spots. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, like I said, pre-existing condition. He's a pre-existing douchebag. I I like this headline where they talk about it's uh, ruled by a temple of bros. Worst Sisters of Mercy song ever. (laughs) Oh, man. And, well, it it turns out that uh, they're not leaving Cloud Kitchen to go to Uber and Lyft because, yeah, yeah, still nobody's going back. Nobody's going back. Yeah. um, You know, I've seen seen an uptick in the Ubers and Lyfts driving around. I've I've seen some people getting into them, um, but uh, nowhere near what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. People are still staying at home. They, they kind of got the, you know, they got the Zoom bug. <laughs> I'm not sure that they are in L.A. I've got to say, I've, I've driven around. Traffic's uh, pretty drove, bad. <laughs> traffic's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's really bad. And you know what else is really bad? I, I, okay, so I live in Santa Monica. Venice is basically mm, ah, 50-50 people who are multimillionaires, 50% completely homeless. So yeah. I, I'm used to there being <laughs> homeless around, Yes, um, sadly. And it's it's a problem, and it's needed to be fixed in, in this area for a long time. I drove a little bit. We went and, and had a socially distanced backyard visit with some friends out in the valley. And then I drove from the valley all the way down to Orange County to go see my mom, as I usually do on weekends. Um, I haven't driven through that part of L.A. in such a long time. Uh, I, I actually got upset. I don't know what the fuck our mayor has been doing. I don't know what's happening. There are tents along the entire freeway. Oh, yeah. All of Los Angeles. Oh, dude, have you the, seen Sunset Boulevard? No. I, oh, it's I a tent city. To... Sunset, oh, like, Sunset Boulevard happening? looks like Skid Row now. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's it's just sad and, and disturbing. I can't mm-hmm. wait to get the fuck out of the city. No, man. Yeah. T- take a trip to Hollywood back in our old stomping grounds. It is tent city all the way down Sunset. It is it, like you see people getting out like, you know, no shirt, brown and dirty and filthy, stretching, pouring water over their head to start their day. It's it's really I mean, and, and definitely keep your windows rolled up. I'm just telling you, it stinks. Uh, but Jason, if not for the if not for the grace of God, so be us. I mean, all mm-hmm. these people, 99 percent of them were just one paycheck away and COVID happened and there is no safety net here. Nope. Nope. So. But they are getting tiny houses now. So I saw that. Yep. Tiny houses. <laughs> Uh, and I saw this one in a little bit of follow-up as well. Toyota subsidiary acquires Lyft self-driving division for $550 million. Still 20 years away. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, another taxi <laughs> company is dumping their self-driving car unit because maybe someone with a brain over there finally figured out that they're not going to figure it out. You know, you can hire a few <laughs> scientists, but you're not going to do it. And, you know, I, I keep thinking about this and it's it's always been ridiculous. And I've said it's ridiculous when Uber started their self-driving car division, mm-hmm. which they ended up selling yep. as well, you know. This is like the stewardess union deciding they're going to put all their tips together and develop a supersonic jet as a side project. It's like <laughs> – it makes no well, sense. You're a taxi company and you want to build some of the most impressive tech ever made by the hand of man? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> It's ridiculous. And and as I've said from day one, as soon as we started talking about autonomous vehicles, it's got to be all or nothing. You can't mix the two. You can't have Joe Sixpack driving around drinking his six pack with a bunch of uh, automated vehicles. And we're going to have to do complete infrastructure renewal. You're going to have to rebuild all the roads as we keep seeing with these things, because if somebody slaps a stop sign sticker somewhere, your car is stopping. Yeah, more on that very soon. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, we did have a little bit of follow-up, and I, I know you've been talking about this a bit on the Discord channel, but Jacob writes in, Hey, Grumps, decided to try some Chia mining with a 5-gigabyte hard drive I had laying around. Taking me a while to plot everything on it, but I was wondering how it's going for Jason. Also heading to San Diego next week and wondering if you guys have one place that I must visit while I'm there. Uh, nowhere. Still in the pandemic. <laughs> no, Jacob actually did go, and it has opened up quite a bit down in San Diego, and he's had a great yes. time. Actually had yeah. a great time. I hope he went to the zoo. That was my go-to. I said, go to the zoo. Go to the zoo. Go see Stacy, our friend Stacy. Uh, and he, he did uh, a little clarification. It's not a five gigabyte hard drive. It's a five terabyte hard drive that ah. he started with, which isn't going to get you a whole lot nowadays. 
My current farm is at 27 terabytes. I've got uh, 28 terabytes arrived yesterday. <laughs> I just upgraded my Synology, which now has another 24 terabytes in it. <laughs> there's there's a lot of hard drives around here, man. <laughs> You've become a bit bro. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. I I definitely am becoming a bit bro. Good luck. Well, I got. A, I'm I, I'm at 18 chia now. I'm at 18. So which means what? Uh, the futures markets are saying that it's going to uh, debut between one thousand and eight thousand dollars, which means it'll be twenty bucks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just. I mean, I need something to do. I'm fucking bored. You know. I'm just bored. So I'm like, I got hard drives. Why not? And then I kind of got a little, you know, went down the rabbit hole with it. And every single machine I have here in the house is plotting when I'm not using yes, it. Yes. And, and next Saturday, when you've gone to the polo club and you come back a little bit drunky wonky, that's all going in the trash. No, it's not. No, <laughs> it's not. Stop it. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> in the news. We've got a new section, which I'm going to call this week on Elon, stop fucking around so the stock price goes back up corner. <laughs> That's okay. going to be today. I, I'm personally waiting to buy a shit ton of Tesla stock uh, after Saturday when <laughs> when it drops because of Saturday Night Live. Well, you can you can actually start today because it dropped 30 bucks <laughs> this morning because, uh, you know, the earnings announcements today. Right. But um, so the big news has been this Tesla crash where the the law enforcement not the stock, is saying mind you <laughs> no 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 not the stock the actual car crash that has uh law enforcement saying yeah nobody was driving this car it must have been the autopilot and tesla coming back saying it wasn't the autopilot i guarantee it <laughs> two reasons his seatbelt was undone which would which means the autopilot system wouldn't engage anyway also okay. you know uh the guy didn't pay for it <laughs> As, as we know anything with subscription car services nowadays yes you can't uh, you can't turn it on unless you pay for it unless you get the subscription to the autopilot system which is the new rub that has come out there uh you know they've been talking with the uh, highway transportation safety guys uh tesla has uh the the cops took the sd card from the car so they don't have access to that but you know elon musk is saying guys guys he didn't pay for it he didn't have it. Somebody was driving that car. There's no other way for it to get where it was going. Well, that so. seems pretty pretty straightforward then. I, I I haven't really been following it because I know you put about 7,000 news stories in this article. Yes. I figured you'd tell me all about it. But I, <laughs> I, I mean, I was just thinking, how are they even arguing whether somebody was in the car or not? Because I know with my BMW, if I just put my phone on the passenger seat, it starts dinging saying I need to put the seatbelt on. I know, the, you know. I know. I, I know, you know, people want to claim that there's AI and everything, but my phone is not a person yet. Yet. No, it's and not. It's, <laughs> and it certainly knows that the phone is sitting on the seat. You're telling me they don't know if somebody was in this car or not? Bullshit. Brian, they do not have ass detection technology. Oh. They do not have ass detection technology. Well, what my they... BMW has it. Get on it, Tesla. <laughs> what they have is they can tell if you're gripping the wheel and if your seatbelt is clicked, but there is no ah. ass detection technology. And that we know that be because... the subscription package that's coming. <laughs> yes, because uh, Consumer Reports actually did trick the autopilot system into turning on by, uh, you know, locking the seatbelt and putting some weights on the, the steering wheel and blah, 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 done. But there was right. no 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 uh, faux ass required. And uh, now you and I have been talking for a long time about what they call, you know, their autopilot system and how words matter. Yes, they do. It yes. should never be called autopilot because it just makes people idiots and think that they can do it. And Tesla has finally admitted that their full self-driving technology is only at level two. Which Okay. Yeah. You know what that means? It means it's not an autopilot. It's not an autopilot because there are <laughs> six levels of driving automation and they're only at two, which is partial automation. Uh, so they've basically just been lying to everybody and getting people confused. So hopefully somebody will change that. I've got a link to uh, the six levels of vehicle autonomy explained in the show okay. notes. So you can check that out. It's at, at synopsis.com, which is a great URL. I got to give them that. <laughs> and uh, this is a fun one. Hyundai is investing in teleoperation startup Autopia as part of a $9 million okay. round. And now what this is, is further proof that self-driving car AI is still just going to be people. Yes. <laughs> They're just not going to be in the car with you. 
Great, great, great. Yeah. What a brave, stupid new world. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And over at Futurism, we've got an article about a Tesla that keeps slamming on the brakes when it sees a stop sign on a billboard. Now, I'm pretty sure if you go back to episode four of this show, I'm like, <laughs> we're going to start a fashion line that just puts stop signs on everything. So when you're walking down the street, one of these self-driving cars will not run you over. I wish I had a Tesla so I could like, you know, play with it. And see if I can make these shirts. But sadly, sadly, I don't. And of course, yes, in um, true Elon news, he's just going to host SNL because why the fuck not? Right. Well, I've got some uh, bit bro news for you, Jason. So you may want to hold the Chia horses a bit. Uh, be a little bit worried about it. Of course, who am I to talk as soon as I, I, I sold my Bitcoin a little while back and made a bit of money. And then I decided to take that money and buy some Ethereum and Filecoin. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the bit bro uh, category with you these days, but uh, we need, need to be careful. Turkish prosecutors on Thursday launched an investigation after the Istanbul-based founder of a cryptocurrency exchange, Theodex, fled the country with a reported $2 billion in investors' assets. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yep. Uh, they've released a photo of Theodex founder Farouk Fatith Ozer going through passport control at Istanbul Airport on his way to an unspecified location. No idea if they spotted the thumb drive containing your $2 billion <laughs> or not on him. Uh, but uh, there he went. They, they, the exchange went dark after running a promotional campaign that sold Dogecoins at one-fourth the price at which they were trading on other exchanges. <laughs> Remember that uh, whole thing? If it's too good to be true, it is? Oh, yeah. There you go. So he basically said, we'll give you all these at one-fourth the price. Just kidding. I'm taking your money and fucking off. Nice. Nice. Yep. And he, he didn't care if he was getting on camera because he's probably got a whole new identity now. <laughs> he's head straight to the, the cosmetic surgeon in true uh, Bond villain. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. $2 billion. Yeah, dollars. Barrett sent in a link with the, uh, with the caption here. Venmo introduces money laundering as a service. Yes, Venmo is getting on board um, because uh, what's the Coinbase is the big one that went, uh, yep. went public and made a ton of money. Uh, Venmo is basically going to take the wind out of their sails and say, well, you could do crypto with us now as well, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, they've got more than 70 million customers already on Venmo. So it's uh, now the millennials can get in on the game pretty easy or I guess Gen Z. We got to yeah. stop talking millennials. It's uh, the time has marched on, Jason. I know, I know. When we started the show, everybody's like, "You're not old." Now we are. <laughs> now we are. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> I just like it. Venmo's, you know, owned by PayPal, and PayPal came out with crypto like like a month ago now that you could buy buy crypto yeah. through PayPal. But I guess it's kind of like you know, oh, I guess uh, it's the same thing as like, social networks. It's like, okay, nobody cares about Facebook anymore because all the old people are there. So nobody cares about PayPal because that's where the old people are. Everybody yep. has to go to uh, TikTok or Venmo in this case to get their crypto yep. on. Yeah. And uh, the Bitcoin and crypto markets plummeted earlier this week as a U.S. Treasury rumor has spread. Uh, basically saying the U.S. Treasury may soon accuse a number of financial institutions of using digital assets to launder money. Of course, that's what they're for. Yeah. <laughs> the popular Twitter account FX Hedge was first to cover the potential move from the agency, sending an alert out to 1,000. Uh, 1, 1, 122,000. 122,000. It's fucking early this yeah. morning. I'm out of practice. <laughs> Followers and minutes after the tweet was published, the crypto markets plunged into deep red care territory with Bitcoin dropping from 59,000 to a low of 52,800. Uh, it's since come quite a ways back up. But if you think that the U.S. Treasury is not going to take moves against cryptocurrency, you are a self-driving car. <laughs> See, that's why I like Chia, because Chia is coming out of the gate with ties to, uh, you know, uh, hoping to be able to use it with government agencies and things like that. Because we don't have. Yeah, the, I, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't see the problem uh, if the governments are able to get their their uh, grubby little fingers in there. As long as they know how much money you're making and how much they can tax you, they will be mostly okay with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm, you know, here's the deal. I'm just playing right now, so it's just <laughs> fun. Uh, yeah. Some people who are not playing, good old Alphabet. We talked about this uh, a while ago, back in uh, 2019, when. Alphabet uh, subsidiary wing launched in uh, Christiansburg, Virginia. This was the test pilot for home delivery via drone through right. wing. Now it's been there for a while now, and uh, there's like 22,000 people in the town and they did a study, which frankly, uh, I was shocked <laughs> when I saw this. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> opinions on the idea of drone delivery. 
and it goes from like a great deal to dislike a great deal. Well, like a great deal is 53%. Like a moderate amount, 26%. Like a little, 8%. Neither like nor dislike, only 6%. Dislike a little, only 1%. Dislike a moderate amount, 2%. And dislike a great deal, Brian percent. I mean, 4%. <laughs> uh, I'm not too surprised by this. Um, I think it's – this. put this in an urban market and we'll see. You know, mm. uh, run the run this pilot here in Santa Monica, and you're going to get dislike a hundred percent. Well, because it's okay. going to interfere with everybody's selfie drones. Exactly, that's your you problem. Know, I, there, how am I supposed to do my TikTok vid- drone videos if I can't fly? Because Amazon's uh, drones are flying all over the place, plus the noise and all that sort of thing. You know, this is novel uh, for a town like that. They're pr- they probably don't have Amazon trucks rolling up and down doing same day delivery, so they're getting their burgers faster and whatever. And uh, I can see this being uh, – I can see the future of drone delivery going very well in, in rural areas. Uh, I don't see it doing well in cities. So not surprised. Well, I mean, let's see where they're at. Yeah, they're kind of – whoa, they're way in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yes, I looked, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> well, Roanoke's not too small. So they're by Roanoke, Virginia. In a total rarity, I actually did a little prep and research. I'll be damned. I know. Who are you? <laughs> God, give you a couple days off and you actually show up and do work. Damn. <laughs> uh, and Vincent wrote in some Facebook news of me getting Jason and Brian to curse more bitch, bitch, bitch. And this is Facebook takes down the official page for a French town called Bichet. Mm, Bichet. Mm, Bichet spelled bitch with an E at the end. So, yeah, unsurprisingly, the Facebook AI obviously keeps taking down this uh, this page. Uh, because it says bitch. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Uh, they have a new page named after the town's postcode, Marie 57230, which just rolls off the tongue, as you can see. Yes. Um, tried to reach – and here's the only notable thing about this, and because this is the experience that we all have. I tried to reach out to Facebook in every possible way through different forms, but there's nothing I could do, she said, adding she had already had issues when I first created the page. Yep. Well, that's Facebook for you. Mm-hmm. If something gets done, you cannot reach out to them. There's nothing to be done. There's nowhere to complain to. There is nothing <laughs> that you can possibly do. And of course, a spokesperson for Facebook confirmed to Sky News that the page was removed in error and has since been swiftly restored this morning when we became aware of the issue. God knows how, because it actually ended up in in the news because it's funny. That's how they became aware of it. Yep. Yep. You need a PR agent for your, your Facebook <laughs> complaints nowadays. If it's not on the local news, it didn't happen. Exactly. And the lesson of the day, kids, is do not fuck with Cloudflare. I love this so much. Um, Project Django is back. Now, uh, a while ago, they uh, they had a patent troll sue them, right? Is The Rock in this one, too? I don't believe The Rock's in this one. All right. Oh, that was Django. Never mind. Uh, Oh, yeah. What was that? Uh, No. Jumanji. Jumanji. Oh, Jumanji. Sorry. Yeah. Django was, I, I was thinking Django, the one with the blocks, but no. Uh, or uh, the Quentin Tarantino movie. Could be any of those. Well, either or way. the new Mandalorian movie, Django Fett. Ah, yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. So anyway, back to this story. Back in 2017, uh, they were sued by a patent troll called Blackbird Technology. So what they did was they started Project Django that says, hey, let's crowdsource the d- destruction of these people. So they put up some money and said, hey, everybody in the world, go out and figure out where there's prior art on all of their patents. And Mm -hmm. uh, they did. They found uh, prior art on 31 of the patents that Blackbird had that they were suing people over. So good on you, Cloudflare. Well, now they're getting sued again by another patent troll called Sable Networks. Uh, Mm -hmm. Another one again. So they're just rolling out the cash and saying, hey, have at them. Have at them. (laughs) Which is great. It's like they're not backing down. They're not they're not going to you know, they've got money. They don't have to do the uh, the bend over and take it like <clears throat> Adam Carolla. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it. Don't fuck with Cloudflare. There you go. Today's episode is sponsored by Private Internet Access, America's number one virtual private network, also known as a VPN. Even if you use incognito mode, your internet service provider is storing your browsing data and many times even selling it. But Private Internet Access, or PIA, can help. PIA encrypts and reroutes your internet traffic through one of its own servers, hiding your data from your internet service provider or network admin. And with servers in over 75 countries, you can get unrestricted access to geoblock content around the world. PIA comes with an easy-to-use app and browser extensions for all devices, a rock-solid privacy policy, 
open source security, advanced customization settings, and it was just ranked the fastest VPN in the world by PC Mag. If you sign up with PIA right now, you can take advantage of a special deal only for GOG listeners. By using our link, gog.show slash VPN, you can get complete digital privacy for less than $2 a month and four extra months for free, which means only one buck 98 cents a month and up to 83% off. That's so much more inexpensive than virtually every other VPN on the market. And if you get it right now, you can take PIA's 30-day risk-free challenge. You can try it out for 30 days and see if you like it. If not, just return it for a full refund. So go to GOG.show slash VPN and try out the best VPN on the planet completely risk-free. That's GOG.show slash VPN. Media Candy. So I had a couple friends telling me I absolutely have to watch this movie, Captain Fantastic. It's been out for a while. I didn't see it when it first came out. Uh, really good. It, is it fantastic? Uh, well, it's really good. I, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's fantastic. Okay. It's got Viggo Mortensen and, uh, you know, he basically raises his family off the grid, but the wife gets cancer, spoiler alert, and uh, he has to go back into regular society to go, you know, funeral and all that sort of stuff and how he basically comes to terms with maybe I went a little too far on the off the grid stuff. It made me think of you a little bit and uh, <laughs> because you used to dabble with such things. But I have and, never hey, gone off the grid, Brian. I may have, I may no. have closed. <laughs> the closest I got was deleting my Twitter account. Come on. For You've never sake. even been off Wi-Fi. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. So worth watching. And I, I should have caught it when it first came out. It was pretty good. Um, and you and I have been texting a little bit about the news that Downton Abbey 2 will be hitting theaters in December with the original cast returning. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so we're getting a new movie. And you and I had talked about, you know, the main reason that we watched it is, uh, what's the actress's name? Maggie I'm Smith. Told, Maggie Smith. And and you were like, well, it's not going to be the same since she's dead. Spoiler she didn't alert. Die. <laughs> no, she didn't die. I, I rewatched the entire series. We've been, my wife has needed like early pandemic or early Trump years. She needed the West Wing to get through it. Uh, pandemic years. She needed Downton Abbey to get through it. So we watched the entire series. And last night we finished the first movie. Did not die. I thought her funeral was at the end of the first movie. No. What? Nope. You remember it incorrectly, Jason. Oh, my God. She has a big talk with Mary about how she's, you know, she had some bad news and she's probably bad health news and she may not last long. She does not know how much longer she will last, but she did not die. So she will be back in the second movie. Oh, I swear to God, this is a Berenstain Bears she moment. I have been Shazam. You, you, you might have read the script for Downton Abbey, too, and that could be how this one ends. But <laughs> Oh, my God. I swear to God, in my head, there is a fucking funeral. Nope. Wow. Yep. Oh. Berenstain Bears. Total Berenstain Bears. I couldn't wait to tell you this morning. Mandala effect in full effect. Wow. Yep, yep. Okay. So there you go. And I've got to say, having rewatched the series, I certainly did enjoy rewatching it. But what I really noticed is everybody is awful. Oh, they're, they're a bunch of shit. Awful people. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, okay. Good times. Good times yeah, so, uh, so she'll be back, and yeah, we get to see her one more time, I'm sure. Okay, maybe two. Who knows? <laughs> maybe two. Who knows? And uh, I saw a trailer for a coming movie called The Space Between. A young male room worker develops an unlikely friendship with a washed-up rock star after traveling to his home to force him out of his contract. This looks good. Okay. Um, I'll check it out. Yep, I'm excited about. I like it. I like the I like the premise. Kelsey Grammer is the rock, you know, washed up rock star doing a very uh, Beach Boys Brian Wilson kind of impression. So mm. I, I'm I, and I like the premise too. It's very funny. So we'll see. I have a feeling it's going to be a feel good uh, type thing, which is sad. I wish they just went crazy with it, but we'll see. Okay, I could use feel good though, honestly. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, me too. Me too. And uh, I've talked a bit in the past about the YouTube and kids YouTube and, and my kid and all that sort of stuff. And there's a really good long form article called Raised by YouTube in the Atlantic. Uh, the TLDR on this is I am done letting my kid watch YouTube except for carefully <laughs> selected and previewed items again. That's it. No way. Uh, this totally gets into the basically the content farms that are out there basically mm -hmm. just watching the algorithm and seeing when the kid's eyeballs move away and then put something very happy and colorful that runs across the screen to get your kid's eyeball right back on it. This shit is fucked up. Yeah, that's the yeah. way it goes, man. The way it goes. Mm. Hey, but they're coming out with Instagram for kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw a great movie over on Netflix called Why Did You Kill Me? Now, the star of this movie is MySpace. I was watching this. Okay. And I had such a nostalgia boner for really bad 90s and 2000 era interfaces. I'm like, that's the way it used to be. And I liked it. Damn it. <laughs> None of this you Ajaxy hated crap. You MySpace at the time. Huh? <laughs> you hated MySpace. I never time. liked MySpace, but I was just looking at the, the blocky, you know, you know, they use tables for the interface, obviously. It was yeah. just like, it was old school. I loved mm-hmm. it. Uh, it did take a really wacky, crazy turn in the middle, but it's a great uh, it's a great movie on using uh, old school social media to uh, catch murderers. Mm-hmm. So that was good. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2021. I will preface this by saying if you've never played a game of Mortal Kombat, you will have no fucking clue what's going on in this movie. As an avid Mortal Kombat lover and player for God knows how long, 30 five years or 30 years about there somewhere now. Um, <laughs> it was fantastic. I loved it. I okay. absolutely loved it. They, they've they redeemed themselves. The soundtrack was not as good as the old uh, original movie, but uh, that, that one was going to be hard to beat anyway. But yeah, it was a fun movie. I really liked it and I hope they keep going with them. For okay. sure. Um, then I watched Nobody with Bob Odenkirk. Mm-hmm. This is hands down the best movie I've seen in probably three or four years. I've heard a lot about it. I've heard it's a modern day falling down type thing. Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay, good. Nope. Right. Not, no, not really. Not really. Um, here's the thing. It is in the action sequences. It is very John Wickian. Very good. I mean, I mean, it's spectacular action sequences, but it is also one of the funniest movies I've seen in a very long time. Bob Odenkirk has some of the most incredible timing. I mean, it's it's Bob Odenkirk. Of course he does, right? Yeah. And you turn him into an action star along with it. I swear to God. I mean, we were just in falling off the couch laughing. It was so damn good. All right. Excellent. I clicked on the link and uh, we'll look at that. I can go see it in a theater. You can go see it in a theater. Thank you. Or in your home. (laughs) Or in your home. Yes. Yes. But here's another fun part. Do you notice they have a dot movie TLD now? Yes, I did see that. <laughs> I thought, I'm like, oh my God, they finally got a dot movie TLD. And I went to go check it out to see if I could get, you know, some funny dot movie TLDs. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> they're 400 bucks. <laughs> uh, I, you know, joke's not a joke. Not joke. No, yeah. joke's a joke, but not really worth that. Yeah. And some good 799? news. 7 oh, That's a good joke. 7 I'm all over that. Yep. <laughs> uh, and some news for you. LeVar Burton will be hosting uh, Jeopardy from July 26th to July 30th. Which is pretty well, awesome. Uh, yeah, that is pretty awesome. It, it's it's pathetic that it took basically a fan petition to make it happen. Like yeah. the, somehow the producers of Jeopardy were not aware of the fact that everybody thought that he was going to take over as host someday. Yeah. Um, it, it, you, you, you have to put LeVar Burton in there. I mean, if you even want hope. Now, I'm not even talking about millennials or Gen Z. But if you want even want Gen X to start watching this as we're now becoming the old people, mm-hmm. uh, you better put LeVar Burton in because otherwise this show is not going to last. Has Have any of the, you know, temp hosts been any good? Uh I haven't actually been watching, so I can't tell you. I will watch when LeVar Burton does. I've seen a couple clips. Uh, the football player, I can't remember his name, seemed pretty funny and actually pretty decent at it. And, of mm. course, there was an uproar when uh, bullshit dipshit Doc Oz hosted it. Oh, because God. they were just like, <laughs> how can you have a, a guy who peddles and lies and bullshit host a show about facts? <laughs> I know. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. And what's the – what was that one dude – the winner guy, winner, winner, chicken. Oh, uh, Ken Jennings. Ken Jennings. Yeah, well, he he got he got bean canceled. So, yeah. So, <laughs> oh well. Anyway, uh, I found this one and I thought it was just hilarious. Hulu Plus attracted many of its first two million subscribers from pirate sites. Right. This is genius. This guy Jay Rockman, who used to work in Hulu marketing, uh, back when Hulu Plus was coming online, he was you know trying to get it marketed out there, and there were tons and tons of BitTorrent sites you know mm-hmm. uh, back then, and they were getting huge traffic. So he's like, "Hey, instead of suing the shit out of these guys, how about we do an ad swap?" <laughs> like, I love you. He gave them uh, a fifty cent CPM, which is you know pretty low. Um, mm-hmm. But I guess and no, actually, it's not too bad. I was thinking more. <laughs> you, you compare that with podcast CPMs, right. but uh, 50, <laughs> 50 cent CPM, and sometimes an affiliate fee. He gave nice. us a fucking affiliate fee. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> and that's how they got like their first 2 million paid Hulu Plus subscribers. I'm like, that's some marketing genius right there. That, that guy needs a raise. Yep. Yep. Ah, good stuff. Matthew writes in two streaming services, formal cable companies are going to merge to become one. Viasat uh, says they are big in Sweden and Canal Digital, which is French, are becoming Alente. I thought this was interesting. Finally, someone falls, even if they are two of the smaller ones. Does this tie into what Plex is doing? I don't think Plex has enough clout or money to convince a bunch of streaming cable company giants to uh, merge. Uh, merging is just what happens now. Yep. So, and uh, they've only got $50 million in investment, Plex. So Ew, I don't, yeah, I no. don't see, yeah, I don't think they're a player here. No, uh, that's like, that's like about four hours worth of lawyers in a, in a <laughs> exactly. big deal like that. Come on. Exactly. Uh, and Runcat wrote in and said, since I was an early eighties K rock listener, I found this station quite enjoyable. I know there are many others as well. And this is a music which has a eighties new wave streaming station. Um, it's good. I, I actually gave it a shot because as we know, you know, first, wave on Sirius XM is basically playlisted bullshit. If you want to hear the same 10 songs you heard the entire time in the 80s, that's where you go. I suppose there's some nostalgia if you grew up in Southern California that hearing Richard Blade because he's over there. Mm. Um, I far prefer K-Rock's actual one, which is KROQ HD2, which uh, basically is a little bit more eclectic and has a bunch of the old uh, DJs from from the 80s on K-Rock on it. But mm-hmm. I, I did give this one a go. It is by far the most eclectic of the bunch. There are some songs that I have not heard since the 80s that I heard listening to it for just an hour or two. So yeah, it's, it's deep cool cuts. Listen. Yeah, deep cuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I listened to it for like a half an hour when I was cleaning the garage. It's it a pretty good station, I gotta say. Yeah, I liked it. Ups and doodads. I have uh, finally upgraded my Apple Watch from a three to a six. Mm-hmm. I finally got all my monies from trading in my old iPhone seven, uh, your old iPhone eight, and uh, they even let me basically put the cost of a trade in of my old uh, Watch three to the Watch six price, which is nice. So it ended up costing me like twenty bucks to get a Watch six. Nice. Uh, it's not exactly a game changer. Uh, I probably should have waited until the next one that will reportedly do blood pressure readings as well. Uh, the, the EKG thing is nice, but I don't have any issues there. Uh, blood oxygen monitoring would have been great in the early days of the pandemic when we're all freaking out about such things, but in and of itself, not really worth the price of the upgrade. It's a, it's a nice watch. Yeah. I don't feel like I really gained much. I just, I like, it's bigger and it's thinner and it lasts longer. I like it. Uh, Yeah, I definitely noticed that, that the, you know, I'm not near end of charge at the end of the night, but I don't do the sleep tracking. So my phone goes on the charger overnight anyways. Like I said, for me, it it wasn't really worth the upgrade. If you have issues with your health, uh, with especially with like EKGs and stuff like that, I would buy this in three seconds. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, otherwise, you know, for me, eh, eh, I I did it. Oh, well. (laughs) Well, it'll last you a little bit longer. I mean, my three wasn't even making it through the day. That's why I was amazed. That, right. I mean, and I don't do sleep tracking either. Mine goes, it sits on my nightstand as soon as I go to bed. Yeah. But maybe you don't get as many, uh, you, maybe you don't have as much going on on yours as uh, I do, I, I guess. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you a screen cap of my, my, my watch face. I got it dialed in. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a long time figuring out this workflow. Hey, I, I think you can actually share them with me, uh, the complications. I don't think you actually uh, – didn't they add that as a feature? I can't remember. I don't know. The ability to share complications. Who cares? Who Whatever. cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I wonder if I can share this watch face. It's something I have never thought about in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. It's a deep cut for the show, Jason. Yeah, it is. I did pick up the bridge dock for the MacBook Pro 16-inch. Mm -hmm. because I was at a desk space in my my bedroom and uh, trying to put a 16-inch laptop with a 75-foot wide curved monitor turned out to be really (laughs) difficult. (laughs) Uh, So I picked this thing up. It's not cheap, but it is uh, another – it's another piece of tech that you can kill a burglar with if they break Mm -hmm. in. It is very heavy but very well built. Uh, I got to say, 180 bucks. I'm not sure it's worth it for for just a dock, but it is nice if you need the space. And it's uh, basically you plug it in and it gives you two Thunderbolt ports on the back. So if you still need to use the other ports, you've got cables coming off the top, which is kind of silly looking. But yeah, it does get the job done. Well, and there you go. And this is really sad news for me because uh, while we were gone, Apple announced the new iPad Pro, which mm-hmm. looks amazing. And I was like, I'm in. I'm in. I want one. But since I just bought that new Magic Keyboard, 
I'm like, oh, okay, this should be cool. I can just, you know, swap them. It's got the big enough hole because my I've got the iPad Pro 12 or 13 inch with one camera and the new ones have 700 cameras on them. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, okay, fine. Well, it turns out, no, you got to buy the new Magic Keyboard <laughs> because the, the new iPad is 0.5 fucking millimeters thicker. 0.5 millimeters. You know how small mm-hmm. that is? I, I'm aware. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so... I, I'm like, no, I'm not going to buy another keyboard for 0.5 millimeters. I would like to see how, how it fits in the older one. You know, maybe I'll sneak into the Apple store and try and sandwich it in and see if it really is a problem. Cause it doesn't seem like it would be. Watch this space listeners. I guarantee you within a month, we'll be talking about his new 12.9 inch iPad pro and the new magic keyboard that fits it. If the Chia hits, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> If this Chia pops, then yeah, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Although uh, I'm finding that uh, I don't know if I need it now. I'm like, I went through everything. And I'm like, when I saw the, you know, the demonstrations and everything, I'm like, man, I must have that now. You know, I, <laughs> I fell for the Kool Aid, and uh, now that I'm like, oh well, I can't have it without spending another 350 bucks on a damn keyboard. I'm like, yeah, that kind of soured me on it quite a bit. And also, if you put it together and you get the loaded iPad with the Magic Keyboard. You're talking like two thousand dollars. Like, uh, might as well buy a new air. Fucking cra- yeah. Well, you can buy two. You can buy yeah. two airs. <laughs> oh, silly, silly. I put this one in here for you, and it's uh, called "See a Satellite Tonight." Um, mm-hmm. This Google guy basically used Google Earth or Google Maps so you can figure out where you can be and where to look up to see uh, satellites at night that you can see with a naked eye, unless you live in Los Angeles because there's too much light pollution. <laughs> Or you live in that town with all the drones. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I took a look at it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I just want to pimp again the app that I love that I use with my kid all the time when we get out of L.A., Star Walk 2, mm-hmm. uh, which has an add-on bundle that tracks all that sort of stuff as well. So oh. you can kind of get all that in there. So, uh, yeah, it's a very cool app. If you have not checked out Star Walk 2 and you're interested in such things, I suggest you do so. It's pretty cool. All right. Well, this one uh, is, of course they are. Facebook is building its own in-app podcast player coming later this year. Great. All right, for the olds. Yeah, exactly. And you have to uh, you have to opt in for your show. They're just not going to pull the Apple catalog, which uh, right now I can't even get access to our goddamn Apple Connect account, Podcast Connect account, because they completely screwed it up. Well, you know, it takes a – they are adding the subscription model to that, so I'm sure they're rebuilding it right now. Oh, well, it, it's <laughs> supposed to take a couple hours to do this account merge. It's been a week. I still can't get in. And they added this stupid checkbox on accident that said, would you like your feed uh, globally accessible or your RSS feed URL globally accessible? So in search, when people search it with the API, you get the feed, blah, 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 blah. Well, they unchecked it for everybody, so it's screwing up tons of people's traffic and all this. And I can't get in to see if ours is – messed up so who knows who knows so maybe nobody's gonna hear this that's, that's nobody heard it anyway let's be honest <laughs> that's true Come on. that's a good point <laughs> and uh facebook has launched uh a new mini player inside the facebook app that uh lets you play your spotify stream which you could already do because you probably had the spotify app i don't get why this is a thing <laughs> Spotify didn't automatically close you the app <laughs> you know? at all times. They want to yeah. make sure that your eyeballs are in Facebook and not anywhere else. So you can see none of the updates from your friends because it's fucking useless. I know what's there to see anymore. I went and I Ads. went and checked it out the other day. There's nothing. It's yeah. crazy. At the library. My love affair with Scott Galloway continues and only deepens, Jason. Okay. I finished reading Post-Corona from Crisis to Opportunity, which is his take on business and the big tech companies and education and everything else and how we are going to come out of this. Uh, the opportunities that are there are coming out of the coronavirus crisis and uh, ways that people can screw it up. Um, fantastic read. I, I just – this guy could be the third person on our show easy. Oh, easily, easily. I love this guy. Um, Were there any any, uh, opportunities that you can think of for us? Because we could definitely use some. He he did not talk about podcasting, sadly. Oh, okay. Great. What about, I mean, washed up up tech guys? Nothing in there about that? Nope, nope, nope. Nothing about that. Okay. We're we're still screwed. Tent city for us. Yep, Tent City, here we come. And uh, another uh, cranky old white guy that uh, you and I both love, Anthony Bourdain. A new book has come out, uh, World Travel, an irreverent guide by Anthony Bourdain and Laurie Woolever. So Laurie Woolever worked with him. 
Um, I don't know why this book exists. Uh, I know what it was supposed to be. Uh, she had one meeting with him before he took his own life, sadly, uh, where they plotted out what the book was going to be about. And because, unfortunately, he passed away, they decided to continue with the book anyways. It's a travel guide-ish. Okay. But all she had to go off of was his body of work. Now, if he had stayed alive, I'm sure he would have added new anecdotes about all of his cities. He basically, in their one meeting, he picked out all the places he wanted to talk about. So she went back and just pulled old clips and talked about places he went to. And some of these, you know, some of his shows go back almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. Half these places may not even be open anymore. She did try to do a bit of research about that, saying this place is closed, but here's a place like it. That's <laughs> oh my God. Anthony never went to. Okay, this is stupid. This is, yeah. this is really stupid. It, this book should not have existed. It should have existed in a world in which Anthony Bourdain is still alive. Mm -hmm. That would have been a great read. Uh, don't waste your time with this. Okay. And another cranky old white guy, Terry Pratchett, that also has passed away. There is a I got an alert from Amazon that the Shakespeare Codex, Modern Plays by Terry Pratchett, adapted by Stephen Briggs, is coming out, based loosely on the science of Discworld 2, Globe, Ladies, Lords and Ladies, and A Midsummer's Night Dream. The Shakespeare Codex is a new Discworld stage adaptation written to commemorate Terry Pratchett's life and works. And it is basically an unmissable new adventure for Discworld fans. Now... <laughs> okay. There was a very strong statement by the Pratchett uh, estate that no new stories would ever be written in Discworld in honor of his memory. This feels like towing the line and cheating a little bit by making it a stage adaptation with a new story. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, not too impressed. Stephen must be I'm running out of money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Stephen was his right hand man, so you know, yeah. it's it's probably going to be pretty good. But yeah. But still, it's not Terry. <laughs> Security? Ha! Dave Bittner is back in the house. Dave is the host of the Cyberwire podcast, co-host of the Social Engineering podcast, Hacking Humans with Joe Kerrigan, co-host of Caveat with Ben Yellen, where they discuss law and policy, as well as surveillance and privacy. And finally, he's the co-host of Recorded Future, where he takes you inside the world of cyber threat intelligence. And I need mm -hmm. oxygen. <laughs> well, and I've also recently offered up my counseling services for those who have suffered data loss. So, Jason, why don't you just <laughs> oh, lay down on the Jesus couch here? Christ. Let, let us let, – <laughs> uh, let us uh, – I, and I promise I'm not going to laugh at you the way that you laughed at me. I will. Let's, let's – <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us what happened, Jason. Share uh, share your story with the with the group. Tell us about the pictures of your mother that you lost. <laughs> <laughs> so last week, uh, or yeah, last week it feels like eons ago. I uh, accidentally uh, I was moving some stuff around and uh, accidentally dragged uh, my cursor one pixel over a folder that was never supposed to be deleted, but. You know, just did the quick command, moved to trash, boom, empty trash. I, and I noticed it take a little longer than usual. And I'm like, mm. 15,000, 14,000. What the f Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. So in my, in my rush to get rid of uh, the crufty folder that I was using to transfer some just logic settings around, I deleted my entire production folder with every client's work in it that I had. Wow. And... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, that was pretty much... I was like, huh? Immediately, immediately ejected the disc. Uh, mm -hmm. So nothing would overwrite it. Uh, took a lot of deep breaths and said, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Backups, backups. Let's check the backups. Okay, went to the backups. Yeah, usually every night I back up that hard drive. Nah. <laughs> it was a weekend before and I was moving stuff around and uh, forgot. Just flat out yeah. forgot to plug it in because I have carbon copy cloner set up to whenever they're both plugged in, boom, just auto back it up. No problem, no I fuss, see. no muss. Right. Um, but and you're taking the good step of having that backup drive disconnected from the system in case you get infected that it's it's air gapped. That you would think. You would think. Yeah. No, I had right. just gotten a new bridge dock for my MacBook Pro. And was still trying to figure out how to route all my cables. And I plugged in the bridge dock and got my monitor up and only had one cable for hard drives until I figured out where to plug the other one. So I just kind of sat on the side there. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just an oversight. Mm. Just an oversight. Okay. So all right. 
Uh, then comes the internet. <laughs> <laughs> what can recover immediately deleted files? I'm thinking no problem here, right? Right? Yeah. I, just, I just emptied the trash. Visibility should have been set to zero. Mm -hmm. Get a little utility, go back in, set it back to one. Uh, no, my visibility was set to FU. It was Aww. just gone. Gone, daddy, gone. I got disk drill and tried to uh, use that to pull it back. Mm -hmm. uh, disk drill works great if you've already purchased it and are running it on your hard drives because it, it, it will prevent anything from ever really being deleted until it mm -hmm. runs out of space. You know, it just kind of, it does set visibility to zero and protects your drives from accidental deletion. I had not mm -hmm. done that. I have now. You better believe and I it have keeps now. its own logs of all the files secondary mm -hmm. to the ones on the drive. Yeah. Yeah. It does all sorts of magic and it's uh 90 bucks. Uh, well worth mm -hmm. it at this point. Should have paid it before, but it didn't. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was uh three days worth of work that was just gone from the, the backup that I was missing in that three days. I had a prolific <laughs> three days of shooting videos, uh, editing client work, and uh, basically just preparing for the week ahead of me. So once this all happened, I had to go back and stay up pretty much all night just editing, trying to get the stuff that had to go out the next day that I was just going to go in and upload to, uh, you know, the hosting providers. Nope. All gone. You know how that goes. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I think the lesson, the takeaway here is it happens to the snarkiest of us. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it does. And as soon as I, as soon as I realized what was happening, I'm like, you motherfucking karma bitten her bitch. I'm sure he's got a voodoo doll somewhere. I'm got a voodoo Who, doll me? somewhere. What? Yeah. What? Just a little Western <laughs> digital thumb drive that he's sitting there poking pins in. He's like, I'm going to get that to Philippa one of these days. <laughs> little old me? What? No, no. no. Uh, quick note to oh. self. Make sure I run back up tonight. Huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah, you were just so, as snarky as me, buddy, so you better watch your back. Uh, <laughs> I, I have. I, I will tell you what my new backup regiment is. Um, yeah. So when I I work on three separate machines, so that's why everything's on a removable hard drive that I move around with the big files because even with a, a NAS and moving them around the network just takes forever because they're you know mm -hmm. a couple gigabytes per project and it just takes too long to open and save and all that. So I just carry this little Western Digital super extreme drive that's you know battle hardened. Blah blah blah. Um, so now when I'm done on my main machines, when I'm editing during the day, I go into my bedroom station where all of the magic used to happen with the, the carbon copy long, cloner. Long, ago. Yeah, there ain't no magic happening in my bedroom now, baby. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. All right. You're, now you're just bragging. No, there ain't, there ain't nothing going on there. So <laughs> immediately once I plug my thumb drive in, it copies the entire production drive over to my MacBook uh, Pro. And mm -hmm. if the other if the other drive is plugged in, it it copies that at the same time and just clones it to both locations. So there are two locations now, because you know you always say one is none and two is one. Yeah. But, oh, here's the other thing. Uh, so I I figured out that it was a major major faux pas to just have a folder of all my work in it. So that hmm. seems like one easy thing to move. So I got rid of everything on that drive. And at the top level of the drive is every single client now in their own folder. So it's much mm. harder to accidentally just grab a folder and dump it in the trash, you know? Right, right. right. So I kind of distributed me, that. Yeah. It reminds me of the old days in Mac uh, OS 7 and where uh, quite often people would make the mistake of throwing away the system folder instead of the system file. <laughs> yeah. Remember those, those oh, yeah. days? <laughs> Guilty <Yeah>. as charged. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, when I went through my own thing, Disk Drill was one of the utilities that I used. Um, I also used another one called Stellar Data Recovery. And I don't remember off the top of my head which one was more successful. I, I did get a lot of stuff back through the combination of both of them. I think I let both of them sort of have at it on the – the drive, you know, over the course of a, a few uh, overnights. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a lot of stuff back, but none of it was labeled, which was the big yeah. you know, yeah. pain in the butt. So like, I can go searching for stuff, but I mean, yeah, most of it. I mean, for all, for all intents and purposes, gone. Yeah. So I right. keep my logic projects in the folder option instead of the package option. Mm -hmm. So what, would, what I would get was I had a folder full of what was called orphans, 
with a thousand subfolders that had yeah. all of the individual files from the different logic projects all jumbled together and in different folders that were all labeled the, with the same file names. <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. almost yeah. none of my audio files made it back, especially the one that I really wanted, which was the most annoying client edit that I've done in a long time that I had to <laughs> redo. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, it probably went faster the second time, though. No, it right? doesn't work that way, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't really work that way when you're editing audio. If it was, if if I was coding, I would have had like, it, I, I would have optimized the shit out of that code the second time around. I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember how I did that. Oh, maybe I can make it better this time around. Right. <laughs> yeah. Audio editing is not writing code. I found out. Yeah. Yeah. So, my, I'll just not. real quick. I'll share my backup routine now on this machine. Is um, I'm making use of Time Machine. Um, which and Time Machine has the ability to alternate destinations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So every other one it'll do one. So I have one which is just it's a local external drive, and then the other one is a NAS. Mm -hmm. So it alternates between those two. And then in addition to that, I have my production folders are set to automatically sync to Google Cloud. Mm. There you go. So that's my that's go. my offsite. Yeah, yeah I have a, offsite. I have a cloud storage and then a local drive as well that's that's my thing you don't have yeah. any clients anymore though what are you storing up there i just family have a job family stuff <laughs> huh family stuff and i am doing some work so yeah, oh i, 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 do I have... thought i thought you were I, I thought you said you were laid off for a while or on on uh, was it furlough until this this was done things have started to pick up again excellent well that's good news yeah, which is nice so uh, yes there's some yeah. money coming in which is a plus Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i i suspect my backups are now a bit uh, an overreaction in the other direction but oh, that's yes. okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, bit once twice shy <laughs> yeah. well uh, because we are human that sort of uh that sort of thing will fade with time and eventually we will all end up back here telling the same stories again like right i can't believe right. i stopped doing those backups and here i am right. wouldn't you know it the week <laughs> I stop doing three <laughs> backups, I get bit. Yep, that's absolutely. that's how it works. I tell you, at about three in the morning, I got like super introspective because uh, th there's some <laughs> stuff on there that I lost. And I'm like, does it really matter if I get this stuff back? You know, I, mm -hmm. I over time, I've emptied a lot of dead relatives' photos, you know, photo albums and boxes, and thrown them in the trash, not knowing who any was, anyone was or anyone cares. And I'm like, is anyone really going to care if any of this is gone? I'm like, no. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Then I'm just like, I wish I could still drink scotch because I would want one right now because I'm feeling very maudlin at the loss of my data. <laughs> there is a – it's a cleansing process that you go through, I think. The, the acceptance that – The stages of grief. Stuff is, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just gone. Uh, mm -hmm. And I th – I've, yeah, I, I've been through that myself for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> all right. Well, let's get into some of these stories then now that we're all feeling nostalgic and wistful for data gone by. <laughs> uh, let's see. Minutes before Trump left office, millions of the Pentagon's dormant IP addresses sprang to life, which is a very vibrant and, and emotional headline. It makes me think of that horrible third Matrix movie and the snakes are descending upon the badly raving last bastion <laughs> of humanity. Um, mm -hmm. it, what is this about? Uh, there's a company called Global Resource L Systems LLC, which has basically taken over these millions of IP addresses that were owned by the Pentagon. Uh, this country didn't exist until September of last year. Nobody seems to know who they are, what they are, where they're doing, what they're doing with any of this. Uh, the military has basically just said, uh, we're doing this to assess, evaluate, and prevent unauthorized uses of DOD IP address space. And that is about as much information as we've gotten. Do mm -hmm. you know what is happening? Is this nothing? Is this is this a company that a, a Trump crony set up? Is this just cash and grift? Is this something nefarious or is well, this just who cares? I asked myself all of those same questions when I saw <laughs> this, this story come by because the, obviously the timing of it seems a bit odd. Mm -hmm. um, and my first reaction, I guess – not wanting to give uh, our former president the benefit of the doubt, I assumed that this was some sort of grift, that somehow he had sold off a bunch of IP addresses that belonged to the military to some crony and somebody was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem to be that. It it seems to be that um, 
the DOD made a bunch of uh, their address space public facing and that it may just be that this increases their surface area so they're able to have a better view of the internet as a whole by having these um, IP ranges open and available to the general internet. So that's what I make of it so far, um, mm-hmm. but it, it sure is, it, it's odd. It, it is odd and the timing's odd and yeah, I, I, I mean, like it is we're as find if somebody hit a button this. right when, you know, power was being switched over. It's it's odd. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wait, why would you not wait a week until <laughs> Biden was president? And I don't know. There may be a perfectly good reason for it, but um, it was just they, on the I books. guess they didn't help themselves. <laughs> yeah, they didn't help themselves um, by the way that they timed it, I guess. Yeah. OK, well, I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep at night over this then. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all these big agencies have different branches, you know, like the CIA has investment branches and things like that. Everybody's got little companies off to the side. This was probably supposed to not be noticed by anybody. And they just wanted to activate these IP addresses so they could watch what the traffic is out there and, and learn mm-hmm. from it, you know, see what's well, going on. I, who's I, who's I, pinging all these addresses? Who's, you the, know, what the thought that nobody's going to notice 175 million IP addresses is a bit. Well, why wouldn't they? I mean, they're they're assumed to already be there. So right, okay, I right, right. But the fact that it's in a known group, a group of of IP addresses that people know who that belongs to, and for them to suddenly light up, yeah, I think yes, would draw attention for sure. Yeah, yeah, the hear me dragon block, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it did. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just odd. Okay. Yeah. Well, there it is. Uh, this mm-hmm. is this is a, a fun story. I thought uh, Signal Founder cracks Celebrite phone hacking device finds it's full of vulnerabilities. <laughs> now this is uh, Moxie Marlin Spike. There's a name for you, right? Exactly. I mean, is that someone from the Harry Potter universe or what? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, apparently a truck was driving by and off of the back fell a Celebrite box. <laughs> As it does. What an amazing <laughs> random happenstance. Wow, look at that. Hmm. And uh, so he went to work on it and found out that uh, Celebrite's, let's say security had been found wanting in many, many instances. And from what I could tell, Dave, you'll uh, tell me if I'm wrong on this or expand on it, but uh, it yep. seems like you could load up your phone with a metric shit ton of vulnerabilities that when Celebrite or if a Celebrite device was sucking the info off your phone uh, would basically own it because they have such yeah. terrible security that they're just going to take everything in on at face value that none of it is malicious and mm-hmm. uh, just just gobble it up like they'll they'll suck in the poison pill and swallow it happily. Right. Now, let's back up just a little bit and, and point out that um, Moxie Marlin Spike, whose name I just I cannot say enough <laughs> times throughout the day because it makes me happy. Um, <laughs> he basically set off on this journey because Celebrite had announced that they were going to go after Signal. So they were right. saying if you have signal on your device, you know, that's that's a new target for us. So Yeah, they said they were um, gonna like crack signals encryption. Right. They, and Mr. Yeah. Marlin Spike said, Oh, really? All right. Uh <laughs> and that's when he had the amazing coincidence of finding one of their devices falling off the truck and he went and dug into it. And as you say, what he discovered is that you can put a file on your device. And when Celebrite sucks that file into their software, if your file is properly formatted, you own that machine, Mm -hmm. the whole machine. And so you can affect um, how uh, future devices that they scan come up, Mm -hmm. right? right? So the bottom line is this vulnerability puts into question everything that Celebrite pulls out of any device because... There's no way to know if the machine that's doing the scanning was previously compromised by a previous device. Mm. Um, the other thing that uh, – well, a couple of things that he <laughs> that he brought to light. One was that uh, Celebrite was using some Apple uh, security um, with certificates within their software, I th- believe some things from iTunes um, without permission. And Don't- so he – he helpfully pointed out that perhaps <laughs> Apple may want to take a look at that from a copyright point of view. 
and then he also said that um, from this point on, all versions of Signal are going to have some extra files included with them <laughs> that are there purely for aesthetic purposes. They do absolutely nothing else. They f- they have no functionality for Signal itself. They're only there because of the beauty of the files uh, and that everyone using Signal should simply ignore them. <laughs> So seems reasonable. Not only, yeah. So not only does Moxie Marlin spike. Uh, well, he lives up to his Moxie name, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, he, <laughs> he does. does. <laughs> yeah. So um, in the meantime, today Celebrite released a patch. Uh, <laughs> shocker. <laughs> <laughs> and the folks who follow these sorts of things, I think they spoke to a security researcher who uh, has access to the patch and Celebrite, and they said, "Yeah, this helps, but it's not. It's not a fix. It it it's a mitigation, but it's not a fix." So. I think Celebrate uh, leaves this with egg on their face, and if I were a law enforcement organization using Celebrate, I, it, it makes everything uh, questionable now. So they're going to have to come up with a, a way to fix this, and, and we'll see if Apple comes after them either publicly or behind the scenes and says, hey, mm-hmm. knock it off. As I was reading this, I had I had this image in my head of the typical hacker, you know, with the hoodie on and Moxie's <laughs> sitting there hacking away on it. And then the screen just goes bright. His eyes go wide and he goes, my God, it's full of Vons. <laughs> his jaw drops and he takes to the Internet to yeah. go after his yeah. sworn enemy. That's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, people seem to be taking a certain amount of, of pleasure Joy. in these these <laughs> yeah the the swagger with which uh, Moxie went after these folks. So there's that. The balls on that guy, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know this uh, this next story I put in here. Um, I got an email from a listener who uh, thought that he might be going crazy because his ring doorbell was never recording Amazon delivery drivers. Mm -hmm. And I read his accounting of it. um, And this is someone who is no, this is someone who understands security and kind of knows his stuff. Well, obviously they have the Amazon basics and visibility cloak. Well, (laughs) as I'm reading through this, I'm thinking to myself, is this the new version of my phone is listening to me? Right. Right. Could this be that? Mm -hmm. So I did a little bit of digging around. I I included a link here to the Ring community page, the Ring doorbells. And sure enough, this is pretty widespread um, where Ring doorbells are picking up everybody but delivery people and not just Amazon delivery people, sometimes U.S. Postal Service people, sometimes FedEx people. Someone pointed out that they had a non-Ring brand a security camera hanging off of their garage, and it went dark whenever the Amazon delivery person came. Hmm. My con- my guess here is that the delivery people have discovered that for the low, low price of however many dollars <laughs> a Wi-Fi jammer costs, which is probably around 10 bucks, mm-hmm. um, they're invisible when they're walking up to people's porches and dropping off packages. And there's that's there's good reason for that i mean it saves them some of the potential liability of customers bitching and moaning about you know you dropped my package or you tossed it over the fence or whatever right um so I suspect that's what's going on here. Did, did you guys – did you read any of this? What, what's your take? I would also like to say $10 in a felony because owning a Wi-Fi jammer is a felony. <laughs> well, I mean there's that. It is, but who amongst us? I bought, one, uh, I, bought, I bought a Wi-Fi jammer in Bangkok not knowing the fact that it was a felony and brought it home and found uh-huh. out what the actual legalities of having that in my luggage were was coming through customs and, and mm. lost about five years of my life going, oh, my <laughs> God, and immediately yeah. uh, disposed of it. But so I have a ring camera. On mm-hmm. my okay. house, on my front door. Oh, so we can test this. No need. <laughs> no need to test it, Dave. Uh, oh, okay. You want to know why? These people yes. are absolutely correct. Absolutely okay. correct. I can show you many, many videos that have uh, either, uh, even yesterday, the post office guy came up with, it was surprisingly, an Amazon delivery that, that they had mm-hmm. outsourced, mm-hmm. left mm-hmm. it on my porch. 
And then next thing I know, like maybe an hour later, I get a little notice from Amazon. So your package has been delivered. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Because I usually get a ring notification if somebody comes to the door. Open, right. open the door. The next thing I get is a ring notification of me walking out the door and picking up my package that is right there in front of the camera. This yep. has happened, I'd say, you know, over the past couple of weeks, almost every time there's a delivery. Hmm. Except for the post office guy. The post office guy is always there. Now, I had a theory about this that could okay. that could explain a lot of this away. Remember when I used to explain how the ring cameras were garbage? Oh, that's mm -hmm. oh, yes. shit. every episode mm -hmm. we talked about the ring cameras. Um, what they would do is <laughs> I don't remember that, Jason. Uh, gee, that, uh, I, so yeah, if you not happen very often, if you go with the default settings on the ring camera, something triggers the motion. It will record 30 seconds and then wait five minutes for a uh, something to pick back up. Right. It, mm -hmm. it, it just resets and waits five minutes. So you see the criminal coming up and then the crime is gone and the getaway car is gone <laughs> is how it works. Um and you can tweak that in the settings, but on my front door doorbell, I've never did that. I only did it on the outside security cameras for the garage and the studio and all that stuff, not the front door. So I didn't think okay. it mattered because the only p times it gets signaled is when somebody comes up or a garbage truck goes by. Regular trucks don't trigger it. But for most people, what might happen is the Amazon delivery driver goes by, parks all out of frame. That has already triggered the 30 seconds recording. So it's it's recording after it's triggered by the Amazon truck goes out of frame. Amazon guy is mm -hmm. picking up the packages. The the thirty seconds ends before anybody comes into frame. The five minutes start before the recycle. The guy comes up to the door, puts the package down, leaves, and then boom, voila, there is a package. So I think it might so, be just a flaw in the way that it's doing the triggering and the recording of video. That's I mean, that's just a theory I have. I can't prove it. Yeah. But I can tell you right now that when these guys come to my door, there is no record of them ever showing up. This is like <laughs> some X-Files shit. Packages just appear. And they're not they're, – right. they're taking their time because they're taking a picture of the package on mm -hmm. my front doorstep with the ring camera firmly in view right. of them taking a photo. Right. But the ring camera does not pick them up. So <laughs> now, OK, so you are, as we all know, the camera guy. Yes. Um, could we test this by having you set up a second Wi-Fi enabled camera that's not a ring camera to also keep an eye on your front door so we can see if that camera gets blanked out as well? Oh, you know, I'm already over that shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, I'm all over it. <laughs> No, now that now that I know that this is a thing, yeah, I'm setting up multiple cameras. I'm setting up multiple cameras for different vendors to point out my front door. Okay. All right, very good. Yep, very good. I got an Maybe Am. I have to set up a website. He's on yeah. it. <laughs> now I got an Amcrest camera, so that's you know one of the lovely Chinese-made cameras that everybody makes fun of me for. That's been in a box, It's ready to go. Plug that bad right. boy in. I'm going to point it, it from one side of the house, looking at the front door. I've got a Logitech circle camera that I'm going to go from the other side of the front yard so we can mm -hmm. see if anything happens with those. And then I'll just – the those two cameras are recording all the time. So if anything happens and they blip out, then we'll definitely know something's going funky. Um, mm -hmm. and, and here's the fun part. The Amcrest records to an SD card. The Logitech records to the cloud. And then in the middle will okay. be the ring. So we've got three different – actual cameras with three different storage devices going on. So I love we, it. we should be able I to love it. scientifically <laughs> test this. I love this. Yeah. I love now, this plan. I, I, I will say that follow-up is not exactly our forte, but let's try to. <laughs> oh, this one I'm in, man. I'm totally in on this one. Come on. This All is right. in my wheelhouse. <laughs> If they were using some kind of Wi-Fi jamming, you would notice that in the entire house, your internet would go down for the 30 seconds that they were doing their jamming, right? Wouldn't you, you think? You'd think. You'd yeah. think. But some people might not notice it. They'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, reload, reload. Oh, it's back up. Never mind. And they never think about it right. again, you know, because right. yeah. your if home Wi-Fi goes down all the time. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking was to have a – um you know, like a software-defined radio rig, just looking at that part of the spectrum, uh, you know, you could time align it with to see if there's some sort of broadband sort of, you know, spark gap generator over that band of frequencies just now, spike when look, the delivery uh, folks come. Perhaps I'm overthinking it. I know we're tech guys, <laughs> but uh, have we considered just asking one of them? I can't oh, tell when on, they're here, right. so they, they disappear before I can get a hold of them. 
All I, I see mean, is they're, they're out on the street all the time. Just ask a dude. Yeah, yeah. You, you think they're gonna tell? Do you think they're gonna give up that secret to us? <laughs> Well, okay, torture might be required. <laughs> That's our new podcast. Just ask a dude. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Uh, I'm just saying there might right. be a simpler way to get to the bottom of this, but uh, you, you, you two go well, ahead. No, well, that's Brian, no Brian, fun. no. Where's the fun in that? Let's divide and conquer. You go ask him, <laughs> and I'll set up the uh, cameras like I'm in the fucking lone gunman, which is what right. I do. <laughs> You're the social Brian, guy. You go talk. I'm going to sit yeah. here and figure it out. <laughs> Uh, you're okay. probably the guy when you're lost you go ask for directions too right uh, Am I silly right? me silly me i know <laughs> uh, patreon.com slash gog we're gonna need to buy a van <laughs> <laughs> right right oh, all right boy. well i the yeah. game is afoot <laughs> all right speaking of people that have written in and asked questions and hopefully this will not involve a a van. Uh, hi, Jason and Brian. This is from Miles. I recently learned about a security incident with a company called Park Mobile where there was a third party vulnerability. Go figure. In the notification sent out, they noted the following encrypted passwords were accessed, but not the encryption keys required to read them. We protect user passwords by encrypting them with advanced hashing and salting technologies. From what I read, they note the passwords are encrypted and that the keys were not accessed, but then go on to note advanced hashing and salting technologies. From what I recall, hashing and salting, except older algorithms, are one way. And cannot be decrypted with a key. Am I missing something here? I don't think so. I think, nope. I, think he's I think covered. I think you just got a word salad email covering their butts. That's Pretty all. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Hashing and salting is a one way. It's basically a one way to encrypt. So you can you know mm -hmm. rehash, resalt, and get it. But you can't. You can never read the original text of it anymore. Um, yeah. So they just yeah they kind of yeah word salad. But uh, yeah, they can't they can't decrypt it, and nobody can. There are no keys to decrypt it, so yeah. that's why yeah. they, that's why the thieves did not get the encryption keys required to read them because it doesn't exist. Yes, mm -hmm. there you go. And yeah. finally, speaking of vans, Andy sent this in for specifically <laughs> you, Dave. Star Wars stormtroopers on the move. I believe we have our outfits for now tracking down these Amazon guys. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes, I love this. Jason had sent this to me uh, previously, and I love everything about this. This is just – if delightful. I had a van, this would be on the back of my van. Now, this is great. So <laughs> yes. you should check it out. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, worth, a, it's worth a smile. Yes, it'll, it'll be in the show notes at gog.show slash 504, and it is a there tick tock. And sad shout out this week to Daniel Kaminsky, uh, one of the great security researchers who has died at the age of 42. Way too young. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Very well respected uh, across the industry and evidently was a very uh, kind and generous person, um, you know, funded people's trips to uh, hacker conferences when they couldn't do so themselves and, and didn't look for any credit or attention or anything like that, but also was uh, a very capable um uh, hacker in his own right and uh, really, you know, made, made a difference in the community and, as you say, gone way too soon. Hmm. Yeah, and saved DNS for the most part. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Now, you will be missed, Daniel. Sad times. Well, on that yeah. happy note, talk <laughs> to you guys next week when I come back All with right. my results of my... <laughs> My stake out. I hope I don't out. have to fucking bail you out this week. That's all I have to say. I'm in my own yard. Why would you have to bail me out? I'm, Dave's I, I the one that wants you, to. I know you, Jason. I know you. Mm -hmm. Dave's you the one that wants yeah. to drive Ten around with a triangulation far. van. Come on. Right. No, no, no. Next thing you know, you've got a pit dug out in your front yard full of spikes at the bottom of it. <laughs> it's, it's camouflage. And you got it. It's full of FedEx delivery guys. <laughs> the, the, the Amazon guy was supposed to bring my lava, but I can't see him. I don't know if he showed right. up or not. Right. Exactly. Exactly. We know how this is going to end. We just want to watch it happen. <laughs> well, fortunately, it will be recorded on camera. There you go. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's what happened, officer. But then you'll forget to back up the... Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Closing shout out. Over at Patreon, we've got Jeremy and Kayfabe Friend. What a great name. Love that. <laughs> 
Yep. And at PayPal, we have Raj, Adam, Logan, Nathaniel, Michelle, John, Andre, Tom, Michael, Joseph, Charlie, Andrew, Thomas, Mark, John, Tom, and Rick, who says, love your show. Funny to get updated on the empty cheese shelves by your show. Think they paid or finally restored their backups. We're now recovering from our cheese crisis over here. Keep up the good work. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Over at Pod Chaser, Mike M gave us five stars. I began listening to these guys because of Jason's connection to the Jordan Harbinger show and because his advice helped me secure my email account from constant hacking. If you've ever complained about Facebook, have strong opinions on Star Trek and Star Wars, or are a fan of technology, then this is a podcast for you. They're informative, funny, and always enjoyable to listen to. Thank you very much, Mike M. Thank you. And over at Podcast Addict, Where Is Q gave us a five-star rating as well. Love this podcast. Seeing new episodes posted on Wednesdays are a highlight of the week. I've introduced my wife to the show who enjoyed it but has yet to commit to regular listening. Can't recommend it enough. Commit. 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 And I got a shout-out for a new project I'm working on. Uh, I am now – Brian, I signed – farming. I signed a contract that says I am now technically an influencer. I shit you not. <laughs> That's right. That's right, baby. Wow. Words matter, as I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be doing a show every week over at Adorama XP on Twitch. So if okay. you are a Twitch watcher, go ahead and sign up now and uh, you can come see me on Wednesdays. I will be on there from, uh, was it uh, 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern? That's how that works. Yeah, for a couple hours talking about audio podcasting and uh, whatever else they'll let me talk about. So that's every week on Wednesdays for the at least the next three months until they figure out if they want to keep me or not. I, I'm looking forward to hot Chia talk. Hot Chia talk. That's right. Until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. If you enjoyed the show, please consider visiting GOG.show slash donate to help us keep the lights on, and we'll love you forever. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 504. From there, you can find all the links that we talked about in this episode. And you can also head over to GOG.show slash contact and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash review and toss us a five-star and snarky review. And please, if you don't already follow us in your podcast player of choice, go to GOG.show slash follow, which you can also send your friends to, by the way, where you can find convenient links to every podcast player so you can get the show as soon as it drops. Stay grumpy.